Hello everyone, Angelica Chukwan here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. Now, there's a lot of talk going on lately about the AI capabilities and how they are now being integrated in the Microsoft products, including Power BI. But did you know there are already a few built-in AI visuals in Power BI? Maybe you did, but you haven't really used them too much or haven't really dived into exploring each one of them in detail. In my new series, I'm gonna cover the AI visuals and today we're gonna to focus on the Q&A visual. So let's go ahead, let's dive right into the Power BI desktop and take a look how you can leverage the Q&A visual in your Power BI reports. Before we begin, are you planning on taking the PL300 certification exam? Then check out Cert XP, a fun new way to prepare for that PL300 where you will get exposure to practice exam questions. Visit crag.work slash Angelica40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription and get access to all of Cert XP features. Now, on to the video. All right. So here's the report that I'm going to be using w throughout this series on AI visuals. Now you can see the AI visuals here. We have the key influencers visual. We have the decomposition tree, Q&A, and we'll cover smart narratives a bit later. Today, what I would like to focus on is the Q&A visual. So I'm going to jump over to a separate tab for this so we can focus just in solely here on the Q&A visual. So the Q&A visual is an AI visual in Power BI that allows you to ask questions of your data and you will get the answer returned in the form of a visual. Now, you can add Q&A into your reports a couple of ways. You can select from the Viz pane here, the Q&A visual. You can also add a new Q&A visual by double clicking into the background of your reports. So you have a few ways to add that into your report. You can also go up to the insert tab and you can see not only the Q&A visual here, but those other AI visuals that are built into Power BI. Now there's even a Q&A button that you can add from that buttons tab if you would like to create a smaller version of this in your report. So if you didn't wanna have this take up full space here, you can add in that button for your report users. But let's go ahead and take a look at using Q&A here today. So Q&A works in the Power BI desktop as well as on dashboards and the Power BI mobile application too. The way Q&A works is you will input your question here or a statement using natural language, and it's gonna pick the best visual based on the data. Now, sometimes that's going to be defined as a certain data type or category. So in other words, a Q&A visual may leverage a line chart for date data if it's stored as a date data type. It could also leverage a data category for, let's say, a geographic location. So if you search for uh, sales by country and it is marked as a country category in that data category field, it may produce a map visual for you. But let's go ahead and let's test this out here to take a look at a couple of options. And then we'll talk through these different features and how Q&A works. So let's take a look here first. And let's go ahead and ask something like first customer purchase. And so we can see the autocomplete there as well. We can select and pull that in. You can see here a couple of things that I want to talk about. There's these blue lines under these terms, and those blue lines indicate that it is recognizing those terms. Now, you may see later on, if we ask a question, you may see red double underlines. That means there's no match or it does not recognize the term. And then there's another indicator, and that is when you see a dashed or dotted line, and that is orange. But they do add in the double line and the dash there to help uh, provide a way for distinguishing between them if you cannot see the colors as clearly. So first customer purchase, you can see it is showing the results here, pulling from our customer dimension and we're seeing the customer key. And so it's looking at the data first purchases based on the customer key. And we can see that our first purchases by our customers were back in July of 2005. All right, let's take a look at total orders by product and year. 
So here we see we're getting the result for total orders. So it's showing this here, total orders. Now total orders matches something in the data. And so I know that here in the fact table, we have a measure called total orders. So that's what it is relating back to here. That's what it is pulling from. But you notice we didn't get um, that by year. So let's go ahead and try this again here. Let's try total orders by year this time and let's see what we get. Okay, we get the same result. So let's try this again slightly differently. Let's look up total orders by calendar year. Now there we go, we get a better result. So while you see you can ask that question here and get a result, it is not without flaw. <laughs> so it is an AI feature, but it is not perfect. But the neat thing about this feature is you do have the ability to modify and train it. Now let's ask another question here now. I'm going to keep this one here because I think this produced something that we wanna look at later. So if you'd like to keep a result from Q&A, you can select this icon right here, turn it into a standard visual on your report. It will even add a title to it, which we can go back and edit obviously if we would like. Now. What if we wanted to look at, let's say, total sales by country? So let's go ahead and take a look, total sales by country, and let's see the result. All right, well, we have a bar chart here displaying our total sales by country, which works for us here in this example. But what if instead, if instead of seeing total sales by country as a bar chart, what if we wanted to see this as map? Well, we could ask Power BI's, hey, okay, show me total sales by country as map. And we could do that. Or what we can do is we can go into our sales territory table where that country column is located. We can select that country to open up our column tools and we can modify the data category. Modifying your data category is going to be useful to Q&A because now it has a better idea of how to recognize that data and it's going to improve the results that it produces. So let's go ahead and select country here now. And notice while Q&A is still in edit mode, let's see how it reveals that result. All right, so now we can see it showing total sales by country. And because we have modified the data category of the country column, we can now see that it is showing and it's displaying it here on the map for us, which is very neat. That's very cool here. So if we wanna keep that one again as well, we can go ahead and select that and keep that in here. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at another Q&A option. So I'm gonna double click in the, to the background of my report to add this visual in here. And let's go ahead here and take a look now at our total sales again, but this time I want to look at a particular range. So let's say total sales by country between so let's look at between May 2005 and June of 2006. Let's put in a particular range here. Well, now you'll notice we're getting that orange underline. So it's indicating to us that, hey, there is a match, but there might be more than one match. And we're not really sure. Power BI is not really sure which one to select. So we can go in here and say, okay, I want to see total sales by order date, by birth date, date of first purchase. The full date alternate key column, which is our full date column, and we can hit show more to see what else is here, or by ship date. Well, I want to take a look at total sales by country by order date. So I'm going to select that here. Again, it's showing as a map. Maybe we want to say instead as, let's go ahead and select here as donut chart. We'll give that donut chart a little bit of attention here. And so there we go. We can also use it to leverage the donut chart here and pull that in. And again, if we like this visual and we wanna keep this in our reports, what we can do is we can go in and turn this into a standard visual in our report. All right, now what about, let's look at one more. So I'm gonna double click here and open up Q&A one more time. Again, I like to double click because it's easier to open that up here in the report. What if a user types in a question and the term is not recognized, but maybe it's a common term that is used for example, we've been looking at sales by country, but what if instead of typing in sales by country, our users type in revenue by country? Well, we can see here that it did 
have a result for us. But it's still showing as not a complete match and we're seeing English country name by English country region name and total yearly income. So it's not quite sure of what we mean by revenue. And so maybe we're talking about that sales revenue. So what can we do here to improve the results? Well, there's this gear icon here that allows you to go in and train Q&A and manage the terms and add in synonyms. So let's select this gear icon here and take a look. So you can see there are these different tabs here. We have the getting started tab that lets you see kind of an overview of all of the different things that you can modify to improve Q&A. So let's start with synonyms here, looking at synonyms. You can see here all of the tables within this report in this data model. And you can see that we can even choose which tables as well as which columns to include in Q&A or if there's any that we might say, you know what, don't include these in Q&A and look at those. So whether that is enabled or not is going to determine your results. So we've enabled that there now. So let's take a look at our sales table here. And so let's talk about revenue. So revenue may be a term that is used for sales. And so maybe we want to go in and add that into the field here. So going into where my total sales measure is, I can see that right now total sales is a synonym to this as well as sales. So right now I can see that sales is a synonym here that is going to be used. And I can see I can also add in total sale, overall sale, but I can also hit the add button here and I can go ahead and say, let's see uh, total revenue. And so maybe we wanna add total revenue in here. I can add in again, and let's go ahead and add in revenue here now, do this, and then click out to add in that field. Here is where you can choose whether or not to hide a particular column or field within your data. Now up here at the top, another neat thing I wanna talk about in synonyms is this option here to get more synonyms. So you are able to connect to other synonyms that have been shared and created and provided by others in your organization to help Q&A understand those terms better. So we could select this here and I'll uh, see what the result is here in just a moment. And it'll let us know that synonyms shared with the organization have been added to suggestions. So to share synonyms you create with others, you can select share your synonyms with everyone in your organization. So this is in the Power BI service. You can take a look at your settings in the semantic model, and you can go into the Q&A section and enable this here, sharing those for everyone in your organization as well. You can also turn it on here. So here in the Power BI report in the desktop, as well as in the service. All right. Back here on our report, we can see that Q&A visual is updating here as well. So we can see that revenue by country is showing here. Country, remember, is classified as a map, so it's gonna show up as a map. But if we wanna change this instead to another visual like a bar chart, we can do that here very quickly and easily and get the, to display that here for us, which is very neat. Now, back in Q&A, if we take a look at those settings here, just to see some of the other settings that you have, you can go into this relationship section and you can see how these relationships that are defined between these different tables, you can help Q&A to understand these a bit better. Here in the teach Q&A section, you can enter a question about your data using everyday language. So again, we can go in and say uh, total revenue here, and I'll say total revenue by country. And you enter that in and you can see the result that you're gonna get here. So you can preview that result. So getting an idea of what your users are going to see. Now, thinking about some of the questions your users might ask, you can go into the review questions area and you can go into a particular data set for your report and you can click into that data set and you can then go in and review those questions. Now, this does have to be a report that has been published and shared, so you can go in and review those questions and help improve those and fix any misunderstandings. You can also come in here to the suggest questions field and you can suggest certain questions. You could preview the results and then choose to have it added, like total revenue by country, like we were just taking a look at here. We can take a look at that and say, okay, that's a great one. Let's suggest this. 
So now we add that to our suggestions list, click save, and we'll see that appear in the suggestions when we go to add in a, Q, a new Q&A field. Make sure to hit save before you discard, and then you'll see that new Q&A suggestion down there at the bottom of the Q&A visual. All right, everyone. That's it for this video here today. So this is the first video here in my series on AI visuals and Power BI. And so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or you want to see more, or if you have a particular question coming up about those other AI visuals and Power BI, like the key influencers visual, the decomposition tree, or the smart narratives visual, let me know here in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post from all of us here at Pragmatic Works. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.